Hello there. Right. So I've been asked um, by somebody within my LinkedIn network to do a video on narcissists in the workplace. That would take a long time because it's very, well, it's almost exactly the same as how narcissists behave in intimate relationships, close friendships and in the family. Um, so we could be, that's a whole other series of books and podcasts and videos. What I might do is just do a wee series of different topics. Um, so today, because my uh, my phone has a wee habit of just turning off randomly at the moment, I think it's filled with nonsense. Um, I'll just focus on how narcissists behave when they first meet you in the workplace. And then maybe if I've got time, jump over to how they behave when they've decided that you're no longer of use to them. So narcissists and toxic people in the workplace will absolutely be able to turn the charm on and off. They'll be able to switch masks very easily. And by masks, I mean almost an entire personality. You might notice their body language, the way they speak, the words they use, even their accent will change and adapt for different situations. You know, people joke about the, the posh phone voice and then how they speak maybe when they're outside in the little smoking area and then how they speak perhaps when the boss is around. That's a classic sign of someone with a combination of arrogance and manipulation techniques and low self-esteem who is constantly thinking in flight or flight mode where they've got to constantly be everything for everyone, which can be quite dangerous because someone with that lack of fixed personality and that lack of awareness of just being who they really are in a relationship or in the workplace is quite dangerous because it means while they're always thinking and calculating and manipulating, you are not as important to them as they are to them, if that makes sense. So look out for that. The next things to look out for is when they start working with you or you start there, for example, is the lot bombing. Very similar as it would be in a, a new friendship or relationship. Uh, intimate relationship would be that the narcissist or the toxic person will suddenly fixate on you or you'll see them fixate on someone else. Now narcissists and toxic people will only fixate on and put all that effort into love bombing and grooming someone if they see that person as having offerings and what's called supply to the narcissist and toxic person. Do they have some sort of important job, status, role within the company or organization? Are they particularly popular and the narcissist is thinking I need in there? You know, um, are they on the up and up? You know, there's rumors around the organization that this person is about to be promoted. The narcissist or toxic person will absolutely gravitate towards anyone who's moving up because a narcissist wants to move up and wants to move in different circles, influential circles, circles that make them look good and powerful and important to help take them up the ranks, if you understand. Uh, narcissists within the workplace will behave in a particularly Machiavellian way. You'll notice, if you're very, very aware, you'll notice that they're particularly interested in status, um, the financial status as well as their social status within the workplace. You'll notice that they, if they're particularly skilled at manipulation, they'll have a harem of colleagues that are similar to them or weaker than them around them. So pumping up their ego, agreeing with them, um, following them round, they'll always have a wee gang that they sit the same at lunch and they, sit, they go the same places after work on a Friday. Um, if there's meetings and the narcissist pipes up some incredible idea, um, you'll get those two or three kind of like, we call them flying monkeys in the psychology world. Um, you'll notice that the flying monkeys are like, yes, yes, absolutely, totally agree with that. Um, but these people are dangerous because then when everything starts to fall apart with the narcissist, those flying monkeys will back the narcissist up then as well. OK, so that's where you get your workplace bullying, you get your cliques, you get your reputational damage, your smear campaign, which is suddenly everything's your fault. And you're like, hang on a minute, but me and the narcissist were friends. And that's very classic as well. A narcissist will absolutely, you'll be their, their god. But when they have no use for you anymore or you've made a mistake or you appear to be slightly better than them at something, maybe your idea was better, maybe your proposal was better, maybe your presentation was better, maybe you started dating that hot girl or that hot guy, boom, your friendship is over, okay? And the narcissist will suddenly scapegoat you. So there's all these different behaviors to look out for within the workplace. Um, I'm trying to think just before I get cut off. Um, other things you'll notice is the narcissist will lie. That narcissists by their very nature are, um, are liars. 
and they will lie to do to get anything they want. They have absolutely, they have zero to no empathy um, and a lack of self-awareness makes them quite dangerous. They will lie and say that idea was theirs. They will lie and say you were late for work when you weren't. They will lie and say that you're underperforming when it's not true. They will lie and say they saw you doing something that you didn't do. Often this is also, these accusations are often also a form of projection and they're actually the behaviours that the narcissist has been getting up to. And this can be a conscious and subconscious type of behaviour. Um, Nice short video, just to get you interested in my knowledge base on how narcissists and toxic people behave and work. Um, we'll definitely cover all those different little things, and there's loads more in individual videos. And let's see how uh, popular this gets and how much you want, how much more you want from this. I'm on Instagram as the Narcissist Hunter, L.W. Hawksby. Please subscribe to this YouTube so I can do lives. And yeah. Thanks for asking me to do this and I'm delighted to be kind of going back into some of my other interest areas which absolutely is workplace culture and workplace bullying because a big, big part of that is narcissistic personality disorder and Machiavellian narcissists. Oh, and don't forget sexual harassment.